Every detail has a purpose when it comes to scripture. And there was one little detail we left out. Chapter 3 of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, for God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You know, there's been a lot of debate about this text through the centuries, especially about the serpent. But for today, let's go with the idea that somebody had to introduce temptation giving how, how we came by the choice between what's right and what's wrong, between good and evil, in that idyllic scene. Because if you never know that you have a choice, it's hard to say that you have free will. And so we have a serpent. And in this account, a creature of God, just like anything else in the garden, and this serpent is given the task of saying, a very skillful question. Did God really say that? Hmm. And our gospel passage reflects back on this. But for the moment, we're given a simple story about what it's like to face a choice between something that looks good or appears to be desirable or makes us appear desirable and what you've always been told is going to bring you sure pain, heartache, the death of openness, beauty, honesty, and trust. So what would you or I have done? <laughs> it's hard to tell. But the point is that we have a choice. And with choice comes the responsibility to live with our choices. I heard a story the other day that I could definitely relate to because there was an acolyte, this is in a church, a Lutheran church, an acolyte whose hair caught fire during communion. <laughs> I'm not sure how it happened, but I think it had to do with <clears throat> relatively small gathering area where the communion was and some torches that were in floor stands and longish hair that was loose and caught on fire. So. But at first people smelled something, and then when she turned to one side, the choir who was sitting up front saw it, and then the assisting pastor saw it and started to beat the, beat the fire out, and her parents got up from the pews, and basically when it was all over, someone said to the girl, how about how calm and, and collected she had been? And she said, I am an acolyte, and acolytes don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's good to know who you are and what your role is and how you're expected to behave. And in our Gospel from Matthew, that pivots on those very questions of identity, knowing who you are and what your role is. The Gospel lesson serves as the scriptural basis for our practice of the 40 days of Lent, which excludes Sundays. Jesus spent some really intense time in the wilderness, and he was facing questions about his identity and who he was as the Son of God. Now, we use the word, but the scripture really reads testing. Um, the testing of Jesus was to demonstrate and see just how strong his resolve was to choose time and time again to follow the word. God. In the last verse of in the last verse of Matthew chapter three, uh, just before this chapter, it follows Jesus' baptism. And when Jesus was baptized, the skies opened up, and we hear from the voice of God that says, "Here is my Son, with whom I am well pleased." And so today's reading comes immediately after that. Jesus 
has been given this almost like a proclamation about who he is. And then he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And that is where the devil personified starts to work on him. Now, the devil doesn't question whether or not Jesus is the Son of God. It's more like, hmm, well, if you're the Son of God, and I know that you are, the devil is to lead Jesus astray from the true path to a not quite true path. So we have stones into loaves. We give, he's given a chance to feed a hungry world. And he's given a chance to throw himself off a temple and angels to catch him. And if you do that, everybody will know that you are the Son of God. So while Jesus is fasting and praying and thinking these things through, the devil comes and offers him some alternatives, some suggestions. And how does Jesus respond? I am the Son of God. I don't think he said this, but the Son of God doesn't. <laughs> the Son of God trusts the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to lead him to a clear awareness of who he is and what he's called to do. This is clarifying for him. And so we following the things that Jesus experienced in We follow and practice a time of Lent. And so Lent is a time for us to fast and pray, to think about questions of our own identity, our own call to be children of God, of who we are, and, and what we're supposed to do. And it gives us a chance to say, to not be tempted to but to firmly say, I am a beloved child of God, and children of God don't panic either. We trust him. And if you think about it, our experience in life, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus in his baptism. Well, the Spirit also came upon us in our baptism. We may not have felt it or known it at the time, but that's what we trust in. That's our faith. And the voice of heaven claimed Jesus as the Son. Our baptism words were spoken that made it too, that we are claimed and loved by God. Just as the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, we too are being led to a time of prayer and reflection. It's important for us, just as, as individuals, but also as a congregation, to take this time to, to think about our lives, to look at the things, that the gifts that God has given us, and the abilities that we each have that God has blessed us with. And in the midst of all that, all those gifts that we, are, we have, and so maybe some things that we haven't even discovered, there's also opportunities. There's also relationships that maybe we haven't even begun yet that are possibilities. They're all laid before us. But with all those gifts we've been given, one of the questions, um, I read this uh, in a devotion the other day and I thought it was really important for us to think about, is to ask ourselves, I as a person, or me as a church, do we use the gifts and blessings that we have for ourselves, just for ourselves and our, for our congregation? Or do we use those gifts that we have to reach out and serve the world in God with God's love? And a step further, you know, as a congregation, are we anxious about our future? Uh, or are we trusting in God to lead us in the Spirit? Are we trusting and confident enough as our, in our identity as children of God, trusting God's love and guidance to step out into the future full of energy and enthusiasm for whatever mission and ministry God calls us to, and maybe something unknown yet. So we head into the wilderness, and we need sustenance for the journey. One of those pieces of sustenance are that bit about trusting in the Word of God. Every Sunday during Lent, uh, 
uh, invite you to, if you, it doesn't have to be every week, but I'll be here at 9 o'clock and we'll study the scriptures coming up for the next week. It's interesting to look at them ahead of time and then hear them the next week. It also helps me because some of our insights get put into next week's sermon. So it's a benefit for me too. But we need that sustenance. We also need the sustenance for our bodies and our spirits. And we choose the bread of life, as Jesus was called to accompany us. Jesus was living bread. He wasn't like those stones that the devil showed him out there on the ground. So when we come to the table today, seeking to know Jesus in our lives and reaffirm our identity as children of God, let's partake of the bread and not the stones that are on the plates too. Amen. Um,